So guys, I switched over to Fedora and here are my thoughts about it. So let's get started. Now, I've been a long time Ubuntu user since I think 6.04, which is 2006. And I've tested the different operating systems along the way, like uh, Arch Linux, Knops, and a few others that I've tried, but never have I tried Fedora. And Fedora is supposed to be super rock stable, uh, super secure, and open source, uh, only open source stuff. I don't know why I waited this long to test it out, but yeah, here it goes. Now, we're actually gonna be wiping out the desktop that I have right over here because of the whole yellowish issue that I can't seem to fix. Uh, what I mean by that is it's got a yellow hue. I played around with the settings on this computer plenty of times and I still can't seem to get it. I'm pretty certain that I could get a lot of my programs installed in Fedora because it uses GNOME. So a lot of my plugins I could use like uh, Caffeine, WireGuard, um, a bunch of other stuff that I already use for GNOME. And on top of that, I did do some quick research on the software that I mainly use, which is DaVinci Resolve. And that should be able to be installed natively right through Fedora. So I'm, I don't, I'm not gonna have a problem with installing software, I hope. Now, one thing I did read, which again, I'm not familiar with Fedora too much because I don't use that much, but I heard that there's usually issues with uh, NVIDIA drivers. So I don't know how that's gonna work out because you do need NVIDIA drivers for DaVinci Resolve to work. You can't use the open source drivers. So I'm gonna be using Fedora Workstation. This is the latest version, which we also, this is a live 36 version. And this does have the GNOME 42 update, which is the desktop that we get on Ubuntu 22.04. So I'm gonna be familiar with moving or navigating around the desktop, just more so figuring it out how to get the package manager working and installing the software that I need. So here we go, first boot. Well, I'm booting into the live USB. Uh, I'm gonna install into hard drive. I'm just gonna jump right into there. So I'm very familiar with how this desktop works because it's GNOME. Does it usually take this long or did I not click it? Oh, I did, it does take this long. Probably the USB takes forever. All right, English. Installer is slightly different than what you normally find on a standard Ubuntu install. Uh, select the installation disk. Okay, that kind of froze a little bit. The 500 gig and done, right? Is that what I do? Um, I only have one, 101 gigs of 400 gigs free. So I got to delete all, reclaim space. Is that how it works? I guess so, begin installation. All right, uh, it's gonna create the partitions for me. All right, it's also using BetterFS, BTRFS. Oh, cool. So I'm gonna have imaging support. All right, I'm gonna let this run and reboot into a desktop and see how it feels. In the initial attempt of installing this guy, the installer is slightly different from any Ubuntu install that I've got. I also like the fact that they are doing uh, more of an OEM install. Basically, you don't have to input your username or password in the beginning of the install. It's only when you first log in. The installer took about 15 minutes or so, maybe 10 minutes. It was pretty quick. Now, this is GNOME. So I am very familiar with it since I've been using it since 20.04 or even before that with Pop! OS and everything. So I am very familiar with GNOME. So I didn't have any problem navigating through this operating system itself. But yeah, I did take the attempt to add all the stuff that I wanted, which is extensions and everything to make it look and feel the way I used to have it when I had it on Ubuntu. Even though the underlying fact is still Fedora, yeah, it looks like Ubuntu or the way I had it set up. Now, I had to get myself a little bit familiar with DNF, which is not something I normally use every day. It's very similar to app. I didn't have much of a problem using it, more so finding the application. So I did find this website that I used to use to find the different package names between the operating system, which I'll leave a link down in the description below. I'll show you that website in a second, but yeah, it's very good to find the exact packages that you need. Then I attempted to install some of the software that I wanted, which is Steam, DaVinci Resolve, uh, Star Citizen, and a few others just to get this operating system up and going. So I had no problems whatsoever. Now. I did have to install something called RPM Fusion to get non-open source um, or proprietary drivers to work with NVIDIA, which was not as simple as just one click. You do have to install it in an order just to get the graphic card to work. But what I do like about this operating system is that not only if something does fail on the driver, it will fall back 
to the previous driver so you will still get the GUI or your desktop. So that was the attempt on installing everything that I needed to get this up and going. Now, real time, I wasn't able to get DaVinci Resolve working yet. I know it does work in Fedora, but it's not working on my install because like I said, it was the process of how I installed the graphic card. I think I got to redo it or uninstall everything and reinstall the certain process to get the graphic card to be detected. So DaVinci Resolve did not work, but yet the graphic card driver does work. A couple of things I did notice is that even though it ships with Flatpak, you do need to add your own uh, Flatpak the, the addition to it. So you can't just jump in and get everything off Flatpak for the latest stuff. So I did have to add the Flatpak stuff which was this right over here. By adding this, it will give you more applications that you need, especially this one application that I wanted was Extension Manager. So the Extension Manager, um, the newer version gives you this browse feature, which allows you to search from the extension GNOME website. Instead of having to go to the website, you could just go through here and find what you need. So the newer version provides this while the standalone version that comes with the RPM it does not have the browse feature. That's what. That's the main thing why I needed this. And then I could add all the extensions that I need to get the, um, you know, the dash to panel working, wallpaper, and a few other stuff. I did also install GNOME tweaks uh, because it doesn't have the minimize and maximize button. So I had to add that back in because that's just nature. I just I'm so used to minimizing or maximizing, especially if I have my title bar in the bottom. Otherwise, uh, yeah, this is the only other step that I had to add and uh, RPM Fusion. RPM Fusion right here tells you how to install it. We're using 36. Uh, I think 37 is coming out soon, but 36. And then um, you could just add it into the pack so you would allow for not open source projects to be installed like NVIDIA drivers. So yeah, I had to install this. And the website that I was talking about earlier was uh, this page called packages.org or pkgs.org. This is a very fancy website of telling you what the install um, media that you need or the uh, actual text that you need to install certain things. So example, if I needed to install glib or something, right? glib, there are ads. In Fedora 36, it's actually called glib132, and that's the full name of it. You don't need the full name, but you could just do glib-1.2. But for the same thing, if I was to use this on Ubuntu, um, where is it? It's not even here. I think in Ubuntu, it would be lib or dev packages. It would be like lib glib or something like that. So yeah, it is different. So I was using this web page to download all the stuff that I need. Now. I did manage to install Star Citizen. Now Star Citizen is a huge game, a very unoptimized and a very, very graphical. And it does install on Ubuntu as well as Fedora with not much of an extra process other than running the script that you need to install Star Citizen. So at first when you're playing Star Citizen, it really is laggy. Uh, that's just the nature of this game running on Linux. So in Ubuntu or in Pop! OS or in Fedora now, the first maybe five minutes, like I said, is laggy. Like you would see how laggy it is. Then after the whole initial process of loading, the game actually runs pretty smooth on here. And I'm running on a, a Ryzen first generation 1700 with the 1070. So this is not packed out with horsepower like my desktop, but it still runs this game fairly well, uh, including the fact that I'm not in a large space station. But yeah, this game is really fun if you really get into it. It's very immersive. Everything's one to one. Even your spaceship, you have to like get into the back just to get into the driver's seat and you know, all the pilot seat just to fly the ship. It's, it's very immersive. So if you guys ever decide to play a space dwelling game, think about Star Citizen. Now, I did also get Steam working, which wasn't hard at all. Again, if you have RPM Fusion installed, Steam installed right away. And then I just got one game working, which is Ascent. Now, this game is a little bit graphical. It's not too crazy in the graphics, but it works very well in Linux. And it's running on the Wine Proton version 7, the latest one. And it does run pretty well. I do play this game from time to time, but it is very buggy. Uh, unless you're playing single player, which isn't too bad. But yeah. This game runs very well and it's a top-down shooter if you guys ever decide to play something like this as well. Otherwise, I had a lot of fun installing this. Um, it actually went by a lot smoother than I thought and I kind of like it. It feels more responsive than Ubuntu in general because I've been using Ubuntu on this desktop for so long I could technically feel the difference. But then again, it could also be 
the new install because it is very, very fresh install. Uh, going into settings, even with NVIDIA drivers running, I am running on Wayland on this, and this is running GNOME 42. Uh, 16 gigs of RAM, like I said, 1700, uh, 1070, and I got a hard drive space of half a terabyte. Um, I had a lot of things running before, so I don't think it's gonna give me a good memory map on this, but it's 3.5 gigs and I, I do still have Steam running. So if I knock that out, maybe I'll go down a little, eh, just a little. Uh, I do have remote session working on this guy, uh, which is sharing and I do have remote desktop working. And since it's GNOME 42, you do get RDP and it works very smooth on this, especially with this many cores, it's able to actually push all the graphics through very smoothly. Uh, otherwise, I had no problems running this operating system. Switching over to this was actually pretty good. I actually really enjoy Fedora right now, and I think I'm going to leave it on this machine for quite some time until I run into major problems, which I don't see myself running into. A lot of programs that are Debian ready or Ubuntu ready, they usually have RPM set up for it. So I do get to use a lot of Red Hat software and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, that is it for me for my uh, thoughts about running Fedora. I do really like it. I do understand why people do enjoy using Fedora and switch over to it because of the rock stability. Like it's so stable. I have not had any issues crashing, freezing, or anything that um, otherwise Ubuntu might have had if I was to run Star Citizen in the wrong way or something like that. So yeah, if something was to happen or something was to crash, it'll actually alert you and you could close it. So it, it really is very, very stable. Anyway, that's my final thoughts about it. If you guys want to try it out, I'll leave a link down in the description below for Fedora 36. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.